Welcome to another episode of Just Podding Around. I'm Reese Williams, and on today's episode, we're going to do a review on the Elimination Chamber, which happened over the weekend, and a preview of this upcoming episode, uh, pay per view, AEW Revolution. But before I want to, before we get into that, I just want to say rest in peace to Ollie Anderson who passed away recently at the age of 81 years old. My condolences to the Anderson family and Godspeed. Now, Elimination Chamber happened on Saturday night in Perth. And it was a, well, I thought it was a pretty solid show from start to finish. The announced attendance was 52,590 making it the most attended Elimination Chamber PLE in history. And it was also the most viewed Elimination Chamber PLE in history. Now, the pre-show had one match, which I didn't, which was announced on this, on the Go Home episode of SmackDown, which was the Kabuki Warriors defending their Women's Tag Team Championships against Candice LeRae and Australian superstar Indy Hartwell. Now that was a pretty good match. I mean, it was a wasn't a main main card level match, but it was still a pretty solid match uh, with the Kabuki Warriors retaining. Now the first match of the show of the main card was the women's elimination chamber match. Uh, Naomi and Becky Lynch started the match. They were the first two competitors to, to wrestle. And that was they Naomi and Becky Lynch were both phenomenal in this. Uh, the next person to come in was uh, Tiffany Stratton. Followed by Liv Morgan, Raquel Rodriguez, and then Bianca Belair. Now, uh, Naomi was the first person eliminated by Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany Stratton was next eliminated by Liv Morgan, followed by Raquel Rodriguez by Bianca Belair. Belair was next by Liv Morgan, and Liv Morgan, obviously, by Becky Lynch. Uh, it was pretty quick as well. The uh, time between Bianca getting eliminated and Liv getting eliminated was only six seconds. So it wasn't that, that quick at all. Um, but yeah, no, Be- Becky Lynch had a strong showing in the in the match, uh, being one of the first two to, to start the match, lasting 32 minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, Naomi did her usual Naomi athletic stuff Tiffany Stratton actually was quite over in this show she got she was quite well, well, the the pe- the fans in Perth cheered her she was one of the most over uh, superstars on, of the whole show so that, that which is good to see I, I'm hoping that upper management noticed that to see that she's over because she's got one of the, the better characters in, they're one of the better gimmicks in all of in wrestling today with Tiffy time. Uh, between that, so Becky Lynch is the new number one contender for the Women's World Championship at WrestleMania 40, uh, which which I'm looking forward to. That should, the match he's going to have should be a pretty solid match. Uh, between that and the next match, they were showing a lot of stuff around Perth and WA, which they did throughout the whole show. Uh, a lot of touristy stuff, like the Margaret River and stuff around Perth. And they did a lot of aerial, aerial views of Optus Stadium as well. And they made sure to highlight that the stadium is relatively new, only six years old. The, the, the Optus Stadium does look pretty good from above, even if even though it is in Perth. 
Um, but next next match was the Judgment Day versus New Catch Republic. Uh, def- uh, to in a undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Now, uh, Dirty Dom was at ringside to this match, and I, I had a mate that was at the show, and he said that the boos towards Dirty Dom were rather loud, and he just ate it up. Because Dirty Dom is one of the best heels in the game today with the heat that he draws. He, that, he doesn't have to say anything. He just has to put the mic up, up towards his mouth, and he starts getting booed. So if that's not a great heel, I don't know what is. But during the match, everyone everyone started calling him a, calling Dirty Dom a wanker. There was chance that chance throughout the whole, well not through the whole match, but for a good chunk of the match, everyone was calling him a wanker. Now the screen bla- uh, blacked out for a little bit. I th- when I was watching this, I thought it was just a bit of a glitch in the system, but apparently that was WWE's move uh, because the entire front row was flipping off Dirty Dom again because of his uh, heel work well, I think that for someone that's only been in the game for just over three years his heel work his character work is phenomenal uh, I mean, he's still relatively new but he's, he's mastered the whole being a heel since his split from Ray Ray he's improved that much not saying that Ray was holding him back, but since he's no longer in his father's shadow, he's, uh, he's improved greatly. Now, the Judgment Day retained their championships against New Catch Republic. Seeing Pete Dunne back as Pete Dunne and him doing his, his thing, especially with Tyler Bate, has been pretty good. I mean, their match skills has been pretty good the the joint manipulation Pete Dunn's one of the best in the game for joint manipulation just the way he works on even work working the things I wouldn't want to have him do anything to my hands because that looks like it'll hurt badly but yeah now this was a pretty so, pretty solid match from start to finish uh, yeah so after this match, I showed even more uh, of the WA uh, tourist attractions, uh, tourism through Tourism WA. Uh, next up, the next segment after this was the Waller effect with uh, Grace and Waller and Austin. Austin Theory was there to be since he's teaming with. Uh, Grace and Waller. So he was there. Uh, the guests for the, the for the Waller effect, the Grace and Waller effect, were Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And this was just pretty much hyping up Cody Rhodes at WrestleMania, and Seth Rollins being because uh, the, the the story that they're building is. Seth Rollins has agreed to be more or less the shield for Cody since he knows how Roman Reigns thinks and acts since they were part of the shield. Hence why Seth used the terminology of he'll be the shield for Cody. Part of me thinks that Seth is going to turn on Cody eventually between now and Mania, possibly even at Mania. So, no, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened. But, no, uh, so they were hyping up the show. Austin Theory was doing his whole uh, rock uh, impersonation, doing the rock's catchphrases. And nobody can do the rock's catchphrases better than the rock himself. So, good try there by Austin. He was, yeah, the, him doing, the Austin Theory doing the catchphrases did draw a bit of heat which is I guess why he did it but so but yeah, Cody ended up shutting him up pretty uh, at the end of the during the whole 
if you smell what the rock is cooking catchphrase. Uh, after this, Cody end up challenging the rock to a match. Not sure when that might, what that will when that will happen. Whether it's at WrestleMania or maybe even Backlash in France. Speaking of the Rock, he is set to appear in the next three episodes of SmackDown starting this week. So, so he's, he's set to be on the first, eighth, and fifteenth of uh, March, which is uh, pretty good. That, that should draw some ratings for him yeah, for this for SmackDown. Uh, so that, that that segment ended with a bit of a uh, well with. Austin Theory eating the crossroads and a curb stomp. But after this segment, there was more tourism WA stuff. They were really hyping up uh, Western Australia because, from what I heard, Western Australia actually put in a bid to host the show. So it definitely boosts the economy. And uh, well, speaking of Roman Reigns, the his merch, he Roman Reigns and the Rock, well. The bloodline as a whole didn't even show up to Elimination Chamber. But Roman's uh, merchandise all sold out. So, which which is good for him and for the, and for WWE. Because they, they got, they've got a good, they've got a good thing going with the bloodline. So that's why they've kept it around for as long as they have. Same with the Judgment Day. Both of them have been, both factions have been pretty solid since they've well the judgment day has been pretty solid since Finn Balor took over and they got rid of Edge they went from well gothic y emo y supernatural to gothy purpley thugs which is a bit more people can relate more to it especially with uh Rhea, Rap- Rhea Ripley, she's been phenomenal since she's the being with Judgment Day has really elevated Rhea Ripley's game. Well, it has really upped all their game because it's made them all more relevant. So, but after the the um, water grace and water effect, you had the men's elimination chamber match. For a shot at the World Heavyweight Championship held by Seth Rollins at WrestleMania 40. For this match, you had uh, Bobby Lashley. No, you had LA Knight and Drew McIntyre start this match. And that well, LA Knight was, or well, he was entertaining. He was he was pretty solid for his first Elimination Chamber. Now they really hyped up Bobby Lashley being in the ECW Extreme Elimination Chamber back in 2006 at December to Dismember. Not that anyone remembers that pay-per-view with how crappy it was. But yeah, they really hyped that up throughout the throughout the whole match. And they're saying that here how he had won that match for the ECW World Championship when that was a brand of WWE. So now Bobby Lashley was the first person eliminated, and uh, during the when the chamber was open for Bobby Lashley to come out, AJ Styles came in and he eliminated, uh, he attacked LA Knight, and uh, that's how Knight got eliminated. He got he got pinned by Drew McIn the Drew McIntyre. So AJ Styles came all the way to Australia just to interfere, but they're really pushing this uh, LA Knight AJ Styles uh, feud, which which has been pretty good. Uh, from from what I could see, uh, AJ Styles is no no longer part of the OC. Now speaking of the OC, I really w- I really wish they'd bring them back onto TV because they they could have a good run. Since they've been back, they haven't done anything out uh, outside of feud with uh, the Judgment Day, which is when Mia Yim returned to to counteract Mami, Harry Ripley. But yeah, since then, 
uh, AJ Styles has been on TV somewhat regularly, but you haven't really heard much from the rest of the OC, especially the Good Brothers. They haven't really done shit, which is a bit of a shame since they returned with hopes of doing something, but yeah, it's... Anyway, anyhow, uh, so hopefully they're back on TV soon, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Now, after the... Oh, uh, after the start of the Men's Elimination Chamber, you had... Uh, so Bobby Lashley was... A, so Ellie Knight got eliminated, then Kevin Owens got eliminated uh, by Randy Orton. And Logan Paul brought back the... Uh, Brought the brass knucks with him, where with, which Kevin Owens dared, uh, dared him to bring on an episode of SmackDown, since that's how he, uh, at the Royal Rumble, Kevin Owens got disqualified after Logan Paul brought the brass knucks in, but uh, Kevin Owens used them to knock out Logan Paul. So KO uh, told him bring the brass knucks. I dare you. So. Yeah, Logan Paul brought the knucks. He got uh, Randy Orton did the RKO on him uh, and eliminated him. Then Randy was doing his taunts and whatnot. Um, speaking of Randy Orton, he was selling his back injury and he was selling it really well. And he's one of the best in the game for for selling injuries and whatnot. Is when he's been in the game for. Over twenty years, but he's yeah he's he sold especially given that his back is legit he legitimately did have a back injury hence why he was out for a year and a half. But yeah, he sold that back really well, and uh, but yeah so after Logan was eliminated, he ended up using the brass knucks on Randy Orton, which. Uh, knocked him out, but uh, Drew McIntyre capitalised on that, did the the claymore and eliminated him, which led to Drew McIntyre winning the chamber match and having a chance to fight uh, Seth Rollins at WrestleMania for the World Heavyweight Championship. Now I I'm hoping that this push for Drew lead him to re-signing with WWE since, because he hasn't re- even re- as far as I'm aware he hasn't signed a new contract yet with WWE so I'm hoping that if he does you know, with this push he's uh, can he does it it convinces him that he should re-sign with WWE but you know, I'm, I'm not Gonna hold my breath in that neither, but it'll it'll be good to see Drew stay with WWE. If he doesn't, I hope he goes. Part of me hopes he doesn't go to AEW, but another part of me hopes he does go there because there's plenty of guys in AEW where that would be a good matchup for him. But but yeah, I just hope he stays in WWE. He's WWE made him a household name. He's done very well since he returned back to WWE. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how it all goes, how it all turns out for him. Now, after this, there was they did more of the, the touristy shit. Then it was time for the main event, which was Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax for the Women's World Championship. And Rhea Ripley got the biggest pop of the night. Now, this is the first main event that had two Australian-born superstars uh, main event a show. Uh, For those who don't know, Nia Jax was born in Sydney, Australia. So, yeah, they're both born in Australia. So, again, this was arguably Nia Jax's best match. Uh, everyone's critical of Nia Jax saying she's dangerous in the ring and she's not good and she's only there because who she's related to. I'm one of those people that have said that and she's just horrible. 
and WWE just push her and they just she hurts people leg legitimately hurts people in WWE just try and push that to and say that she, that's the, what they had planned but she's just horrible but this was her best match she pushed Rhea Ripley to her limits uh, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a solid 14 and a half minute match and I mean Rhea Ripley everybody knows how good she is she's definitely the face of the women's division at the moment so it's a good thing that they that they've given her the, the championship she's had a good run with it winning it at WrestleMania last year but but yeah she she her match quality is improved greatly since she started started with WWE and it's, she's I don't even think she's reached her ceiling yet joining the judgment day has done her wonders especially in the Finn Balor led which I mean most would say that Rhea Ripley's the leader of judgment day because she's one always that she's the one that's always making moves for the group not that she really hangs out with them much anymore unless she has to but but yeah now Rhea's family was in the front row so she celebrated with them after the match so Rhea, Rhea Ripley retained the match re retained the championship and but yeah it was a good match but then not um, Nia Jax dominated the, the whole match pretty much because it was they're doing the whole uh, the they're pushing Nia as the giant but so she dominated the whole match but Rhea Ripley was over, was able to to overcome it which which got the biggest pop of the night seeing her win and yeah that's pretty much it for elimination chamber but now we've got AEW Revolution which is set to take place on Monday Monday morning at 11.30 a.m. Uh, Adelaide time. And this is set to be the last match. Uh, this pay-per-view is set to have the last match for Sting. Uh, he have his retirement match. So the match card at the moment is Sting and Darby Allen with Ric Flair versus the Young Bucks in a t in a tornado tag team match for the AEW World Tag Team Championship. You got Orange Cassidy versus Roderick Strong for the International Championship. Samoa Joe versus Adam Page versus Swerve Strickland for the World Championship. Timeless Tony Storm versus Diona Perazzo for the Women's World Championship. Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Bryanson, uh, Brian Danielson, sorry, for the Continental Crown Championship, which is the AEW Continental Championship, the ROH World Championship, and the New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong Openweight Championship. Now, if Daniel, if Danielson loses, he has to shake Kingston's hand. Now they're building this whole story on Danielson not respecting Eddie Kingston. But I'll, I'll talk about more about that later. Will Ospreay versus Konsuke Takeshita. Uh, Christian Cage versus Daniel Garcia for the TNT Championship. Wardlow versus Powerhouse Hobbs versus Lance Archer in a Meat Madness match. And FTR versus the BCC. Now, as I said before, this is uh, Sting's retirement. The, the, this, the tag title match is Sting's retirement match, so. Uh, well, Sting is pretty old school, so I see them dropping the tag titles to the Young Bucks, because Sting's from that time where, in your last match, you take the you you lose to make the your opponents look good, 
and he's also they've also got Ric Flair in their corner. So, but yeah, yeah. So Sting's from that time. So I see them uh, dropping the tag titles. The Young Bucks have been really pushing this uh, EVP story, and and expect everyone to call them by their their birth name of Matthew and Nicholas. So that's been probably the strong point of the the Young Bucks that they're really pushing the whole where the boss will find everyone rah rah rah. So that's been pretty good. That's been enjoyable. They've really been uh, getting heat over that, uh, especially. Which one is it? Uh, Nick Jackson. He's really been. He's been the. Matt Jackson has been the voice of reason, more or less, while Nick Jackson's been the the hothead. But, which has done them pretty well. So, yeah, they they. They've really been eating up this hill run. And having them wear the white suits with Darby Allen's blood all over it, that, that was hill work 101. The Young Bucks have really done well with this whole hill. They're, they're great as hills. So they, I don't see them changing anytime soon. Uh after that, you got a yeah, Orange Cassidy versus Roderick Strong. Now this should be a good match. There, Roderick Strong has got Matt Tavern and Mike Bennett in his corner. Uh, yeah, now that that the Kingdom is part of has joined up with Adam Cole and Wardlow, it's been well. The Devil storyline was a bit hit and miss because Adam Cole and MJF were both injured. But having Roderick Strong and the Kingdom still on TVs, not that they really bring it up much, but is there to just remind people that that the undisputed Kingdom is still there. I have Orange Cassidy winning this match. He he always manages to, especially if Danhausen uh, comes. Uh, well, if Danhausen. Shows up, he might have a chance, but uh, having Jack Hager, uh, Jake Hager, uh, by Orange Custody's side has been pretty good. No one really expected to see, expected that to happen. So uh, uh, Jake Hager is now a face. He's uh, helping protect uh, Orange Cassidy, which has been, which has been good. Uh, Samoa Joe versus Hangman versus Swerve Strickland. Uh, this is another st- uh, stepping stone, another chapter in the Hangman versus Swerve storyline, which has probably been one of the more entertaining st- uh, rivalries, or it's been one of the more brutal storylines. Uh, they had a time limit draw in a number one contenders match for the world championship, and. Uh, that Swerve Strickland wanted five more minutes to have a definitive winner, but Adam Page did the whole "you didn't beat me, so you don't get five more minutes." And Tony Khan said through Tony Schiavone that it's now going to be a triple threat match. Uh, I hope they pull the trigger with Swerve Strickland. He's been over for, especially with Prince Nana doing his dance that he does. When Swerve makes his entrance to the ring. So I hope they pull the trigger. I don't see them pulling the trigger yet. Uh, so I, I still have... Uh, I, I, I reckon it will come down to Joe or Swerve winning. And I'd like to see Swerve win. It, but And they could use the World Championship... In the Swerve versus Hangman uh, rivalry, so well, I'm still gonna go with. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll go. With, I don't know. 
I'm going to go with Samoa Joe winning. He's been a decent world champion. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if Swerve does end up winning. But, yeah, it's hard to say at the moment. So, yeah, it'll either be Joe or Swerve. Uh, Tony Storm versus Deanna Prazo. This has been a pretty good storyline. Tony Storm... Tony Storm has really stepped their game up since uh, doing this whole timeless gimmick. She, she's been very entertaining. Uh, she's it's, it's over the top, but it's been very entertaining. Uh, they've really played on the friendship that Tony and Diona have had. Even pointing out that little duck tattoo that they've both got on their ankle. Which uh, Tony Storm has changed, which is, or she's added to it slightly, just to make it a bit different to what the owner's got. But yeah, t I'm gonna go with Tony Storm winning this match, just because Tony Storm. Nothing more than just pushes Tony Storm. She's been great as world champion, and Diona's only still pretty new to AEW. So, I, I, I'll keep the title on Tony Storm until maybe the next pay-per-view that they've got. So, where I see Diona winning it then, they'll probably have a multi-woman match then, and I'll... Oh, I mean, I see Mariah May interfering in the match just to make sure that Tony Storm keeps the championship. So yeah, the the owner is going to win at the next at the, at the next pay per view. Uh, Eddie Kingston versus Daniel Bryanson, uh, Brian Danielson. Sorry, this will be a I reckon this will be a great match. It'll be hard hitting. Brian's probably going to get concussed five times in this match because he doesn't. Since he's left WWE, he doesn't give a shit about his own health. But this will be very hard hitting. Uh, I see Eddie Kingston winning this match, and then Danielson refusing to shake Eddie's hand, still, still doing the whole I don't respect you whatsoever. Uh, on. Last week's collision, uh, Danielson faced Jun uh, Kazan, faced a mentor to uh, um, Eddie Kingston, and yeah, there was a bit of a yeah, Jun Akiyama, who's a mentor to uh, Eddie Kingston. Now, at, after the match, uh, Danielson flipped off Eddie Kingston, who was at ringside doing commentary. Uh, Akiyama saw that, and he slapped Danielson, who then proceeded to give Akiyama a low blow, which... Uh, pissed off Eddie Kingston who got into the ring and started uh, beating on Danielson which was which is always good to see uh, Eddie Kingston getting angry is always great because he just flips his shit now next is you got Will Ospreay versus Konsuke Takeshita this is uh, both uh, members of the Don Callis family and Don Callis is pushing this as no matter who wins and who loses, the Don Callis family wins. This will also be Will Ospreay's first official match as an AEW wrestler. He signed his AEW contract at All In, All In Wembley uh, last year, but he hasn't made an appearance since. So this will be his first official match, and he hasn't he hasn't even appeared on AEW TV to hype this hype this match up. 
Don Callis has been the only one that's hyped the match up. And I this will be a, I reckon this will be a good match. Will Ospreay is pretty good when he wants to be when he's not when he's not doing all this flippy shit, he's and he puts effort in, he's pretty good. Uh I'm gonna give the the win to Will Ospreay just to start off his AEW career on a on a positive foot. Then <laughs> Next is you got Christian Cage and Daniel Garcia for the TNT Championship. Uh, this was supposed to be Edge's match. Uh, Christian versus Edge. Or Adam Copeland. But Copeland got injured. So they gave the match to Daniel Garcia. Kill Switch, Mother Wayne and, and Nick Wayne are all going to be by their side. By Christian's side. Now they're still they're still pushing the they brought up uh, Daniel Garcia's family and that apparently his father's passed away. Uh, I'm not sure if he has or not, but they're they're pushing that, and so that which is to get under Daniel Garcia's skin. Since uh, starting this whole uh, best father of the year thing that Christian's doing, he's been really good and I don't like how he uh, conned Killswitch out of his uh, TNT title match but at World's End but that's just Christian Cage for you uh, now I, I give I want to give Christian the win here just so that they can continue the the Christian versus Cope uh, feud I mean Garcia is over as it is, and his and uh, Daddy Magic Matt Menard's been helping Garcia quite a bit. But yeah, I, Christian needs the championship to help with the feud with uh, Copeland. So yeah, Christian's my win. Now for the Wardlow Hobbs. Lance Archer match. I've got no idea what this Meat Madness match is because AEW have not explained the rules to this match whatsoever. I just think that they're pushing the fact that it's three big guys having a match because that's all it is. It's three big meaty guys having a match. But I don't see it. I don't see it being. I don't. Well, it's not going to be horrible. But if history is anything to go by, having three big meatheads in a match spells horrible match at worst, passable brawl at best. Uh, they're really pushing powerhouse Hobbs at the moment. So I'll I'll give him the win, uh, just because they haven't really done much else with Wardlow or Archer. I mean Wardlow cut that promo the other the other week, and he was fired up. But powerhouse Hobbs, especially with him being in the Don Callis fam in the Callis family, is they're really pushing him, so I'll go, yeah, I'll give the pep the win to Powerhouse Hobbs. Now, the match that I reckon will be one of the best of the night is the FTR versus BCC match. This match is heated. They're, they're pushing the whole old school versus brawler match uh, thing going here with this pay-per-view with this match so it'll be interesting to see how they move forward with it uh, but I don't see it this is going to be a fight it's not going to be a wrestling match it's not going to be any technical masterpiece this is going to be a peer peer six brawl it's going to be a slobber knocker it's going to be all the catchphrases that Jim Ross uses 
Rolling Street ugly, they're going to get beaten like a government government mule, all the, the whole nine yards. It's not going to be pretty. I'm expecting John Moxley to get busted open walking to the ring. Cause, uh, most, mind you, I'm surprised he hasn't bled in the last few matches he's had. So, but I'm expecting him to get busted open in this match. Uh, I'm going to give uh, the Blackpool Combat Club the win here. They've been pretty solid since uh, this, this year alone. Uh, well, especially the team of Mox and Castagnoli. So I want to give them the win. I'll, I can see them end up being in the tag team total picture soon enough. Maybe leading into either the next uh, Dynamite special or the next pay-per-view. I'm not sure, but it'll be interesting to see how they go with with this uh, with this tag this duo of the BCC. Speaking of the BCC, I don't I don't even know what's happened to Willa Yuta. He hasn't been on TV for a little bit. I'm not sure if he's even injured or not. But. Yeah. Now that, yeah. So BCC is going to go for a win. So. Yeah. That's revolution for you. So. Stick, stick around for my. Review of. Revolution next week. I'll break down the pay-per-view as best I can. And also... Go to my, all my socials... At JPA Podcast on X and... On Instagram. Just put an around podcast on Facebook. At Bulldozer51 on YouTube. So you follow all of them. I'll... Keep everyone up to date on, especially on Facebook. I, I use Facebook more, but yeah, I'll keep up to date with upcoming content on on Facebook. And uh, until next time, I'll uh, catch you then. <laughs>